o'clock, four o'clock, two o'clock. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're streaming. <laughs> and that went fast. Right on time. I was just looking at my phone and it says we're at two o'clock. So if you're joining us here at two, we're glad to have you. If you're joining us later, either, either here on Facebook or on YouTube, we're glad to have you. And um, it sounded like you said four o'clock. I did say, I did say military time confused you. I looked at my phone and it said 1400 and I, yes. The downfall of the military time. I'm telling no, you. See, here's the reality. <laughs> um, the non-military time confused me. I'm good with military time. Uh, as my friend, Bill Peterson says, that's God's time. <laughs> And it makes sense because God created a 24 hour day. <laughs> so 24 hour time works for me. All right. We digress and that didn't take very long. So let's, uh, you have a topic on your mind that you'd like to chit chat about. Yes. So uh, why don't you get us kicked off, Amanda? What's on yeah. your mind? Yeah. Well, I was thinking, as I think many people are, about tomorrow. Because tomorrow is oh. Thanksgiving. Yay, Thanksgiving. Yes. And, um, you know, it's, of course, a different kind of Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, COVID because, Thanksgiving. Yes, COVID Thanksgiving. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could rename that one. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> um, you know, and so the scripture I was thinking of, um, was actually Psalm 9, um, Psalm chapter 9, verse 1. And so I'm just going to read that. Um, and actually verses 1 and 2. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. And I've just been thinking a lot about um, our relationship to Thanksgiving as Christians. You know, uh, obviously there's Canadian Thanksgiving that happened in October and now is American Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I've just noticed a lot, even among my Christian friends, my brothers and sisters of faith, um, there's still a lot of talk about kind of Americanism or about the about all of the thankfulness being tied to our country mm. um, rather than Jesus. And I just think we have a, a cool opportunity here as Christians to um, engage with culture and to talk to people because this is one of those times where it's easy for us to ask people, hey, what are you grateful for? Um, and we have an opportunity to answer as well. And so just kind of pondering the question of what is our responsibility as Christians around Thanksgiving, especially as it's tied to our country and um, more importantly, our relationship with God. Mm. So what do you think, see, what's some yeah. of the theology of Thanksgiving? Theology of Thanksgiving. <laughs> Well, I think it's changed over the years, I suppose. Yeah. And I think we've lost the sense of the, the real understanding of Thanksgiving. Um, you know, here's what's interesting. The world has its celebrations, its feasts, and its festivals. Mm -hmm. And when they're outside of Christendom, then, then our expectations, perhaps, should not necessarily be Christian. However, there's good precedent in the church over the years for taking over holidays in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, as, as I've said it, co-opting yeah. holidays right. for Christ. Yeah, co-opting holidays for Christ. So here's one that may burst some bubbles today, and I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to do that. <laughs> Christmas, December 25th, as we celebrate it, is most likely not when Jesus was born. Surprise! Yeah, it just, uh, the, the date's all wrong. But the reason December 25th was chosen as a day to commemorate Jesus' birth was because there was 
a worldly uh, pagan holiday on the 25th that I've since forgotten <laughs> what it was, <laughs> but uh, it, it was co-opted by Christians, the church, as a Christian holiday then to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So is that wrong? That's what really what we're talking about. And I don't think so. I think it's stepping into space that's familiar for people. And that's a great evangelical tool. Oh, Heather Colburn has an answer. She says winter solstice celebration. Okay. Winter solstice celebration <laughs> was December 25th. Well, gosh, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, logic. Leave it to our wonderful, you know, scientists. Our scientists. Yes. Hey, scientists. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, it, it's is that, what, what is, it, is that okay? So I, I'm going to give you an example from scripture okay. where Paul the Apostle does exactly this. Hmm. So uh, what chapter is this in? I think around chapter 10. Don't quote me on that, um, but Paul, no, it's got to be later than that because Peter is all the way through chapter 12. Yeah. Eh, anyway, somewhere in the book of Acts, <laughs> in the Pauline part, which is typically after chapter 12, we catch up with Paul who's in Athens mm -hmm. and he goes to the philosophers in Athens, they're known as the Aeropagus. And the Aeropagus are, they include Stoic philosophers and others. And Paul has already made a pilgrimage through Athens, their city. And in the city, when he was making that pilgrimage, he found a inscription to an unknown god. Yes. When he goes now to the uh, philosophers, the Areopagus in Athens, he says to them, as I was walking through your city, I saw an inscription to an unknown God. And then this is fascinating. He says, let me reveal to you who that God is. I'm yes. paraphrasing. Google tells us it's in Acts 17. It's Acts 17. See, I was yeah. way off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. That is exactly what we do when we take a holiday that the world is already celebrating yeah. and having feast and festival over. And we say, here's a good reason to do that. Mm -hmm. So let's take this back to Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. You started. I think it's perfectly appropriate to say as a Christian, yes, I'm going to co-opt Thanksgiving for Christ mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, who am I most thankful for? Right. Exactly. It's Jesus. It's yeah. salvation. It's by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great evangelical strategy to say, I'm going to preach my gratitude for Christ at Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't mean that this year we're, you know, inviting, uh, asking people to invite tons of people into their homes for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Maybe wait till next year or, you know, yeah. whenever it's safe Don't to do, do that. that. Yeah, but and it, I, and, it, and it also doesn't mean that we're not grateful to live in America. Yeah. Yeah. We can, yep. we can also celebrate the gift of being in this country or whatever else, our patriotism. But at the end, that's not the most important stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Not even, even close, I think. Even family, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we talk about, we celebrate family and health and all this stuff. But again, yeah. the, the opportunity for the Christian to say, I am most grateful for the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, uh, relationship with God, entry into the kingdom, all of all of what it means to be in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Historical, historically, even within Christendom, we're in good space here. Yes. Well, and I think that, um, you know, when we look at the life of Christ, he often leveraged the opportunities that he had. I right. think about the encounter with the woman at the well um, and things like that. 
yep. where he took an opportunity that was already present and was able to make it about God. And so for here, when we already, many of our friends and neighbors and community members are talking about gratitude and about things that we're all grateful for. Um, like you said, what an excellent opportunity to point it to the thing that we all have to be most grateful for right. and to do it in a natural way. Yeah. Um, and to have an opportunity to engage with people who may not otherwise really hear about our faith often in a way where a lot of us get intimidated, um, I think, by sharing our faith. But it's such an easy one um, to say, what am I grateful for? Jesus. Right. This is a slam dunk. And we get opportunities. I call these open side doors. We mm. get opportunities when doors are open that aren't usually open yeah. during these periods to say, yeah, I'm most grateful for Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is, is wise. There's a good historical precedent for it. There's good biblical precedent for it and evidence yeah. found in scripture. Yeah. And it's a, it, like you said, it, this isn't a new idea. Betty Quinn actually um, no. <laughs> talked about our, with the Christmas thing with the winter solstice, she said, yeah. I first heard this in college in a history class in 1967 or so. Uh -huh. The TAs were probably Muslim. They mm. said birthdays were not celebrated during Christ's time and Christians had no fun celebrations. The 25th mm. was a pagan holiday near the solstice, so it was chosen. Great, great. See, we have smart people in our church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. Yeah, isn't that great? And yeah. And it's, a, it's appropriate. These are opportunities that we have that the world gives us. We don't always have these opportunities. No. And so one of the things that we do is a Thanksgiving Eve service. Yes. And really that helps us focus on our gratitude towards God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll be reading a uh, I've got a whole stack of things <laughs> from the congregation, what they're grateful for that I'll be reading tonight. But the Bible text I'm going to be using is where Jesus heals 10 lepers and only one comes back. Mm. And it's interesting. The one who came back wasn't Jewish, but, but Samaritan. Oh. And, and Jesus holds them up as uh, this person as one to model after to say this one came back to say thanks to god yeah and we, how many of us have the opportunity to say thanks to god but we don't think about it yeah uh, i don't think i don't think we're determined uh intentionally not to give thanks no not Just at all we we lose sight of uh the opportunity to yeah. give thanks and gratitude so and I think giving helps us. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I interrupted oh, you. That's okay. Um, I was saying, I think perspective, I think this year, especially yeah. in a year where, you know, as you said, COVID Thanksgiving, um, many of us, our plans look very different than normal. And um, it's yep. an easy reason to not feel grateful or to be really caught in that. Um, right. But I think we have an opportunity here to look at um, the other side of it and what it is that we are grateful for, that mm -hmm. even with all of the chaos or the loneliness, even with all of that going on, um, there's always an opportunity for gratitude because we know Jesus. The only reason for gratitude. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there are other things for which we are thankful, right. but it, it's hard to find in these kinds of times, mm -hmm. most certainly. Yeah. Good. Great topic, great discussion. Uh, I'm, I'm looking on the link here for Facebook. We have some more thoughts from uh, Betty Quinn. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, she said, um, I just saw an episode on BBC mm. where um, a native said his ancestors had just had their own sickness that decimated their numbers. Mm. Initially, they were thankful to work together with pilgrims because of the needs of both groups. Oh, great. That's, I love the BBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have some great. They great really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a yeah. Kind of a English humor kind of a dude, too. Yeah. Which is... <laughs> Yeah, well, I just think that we um, as Christians this year especially have have the chance to lead the way in um, showing, really living out this idea of giving thanks in all circumstances. Right. Um, you know, as we've talked other weeks about this idea of joy and having joy even in the midst of suffering or um, regardless of our circumstances. And, you know, we have... The chance to show people what it really means um, to follow Christ, not just on Sundays, but all of the days, um, including holidays and maybe especially holidays. Yeah, agreed. And I think that's important when our circumstance, especially important when our circumstances don't dictate that we would circumstantially say everything's together, everything's right. Things are going smoothly. So the way I want them to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can say that of late. <laughs> <laughs> but we can still say, thank you, God. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Heather Colburn says, I'm thankful that Caitlin's small fever last week was not COVID-19. Praise God. Y'all yeah. tested negative. Just a small cold, it seems. Yeah. Well, we're grateful for that, too. Yeah. And it's a great example of, of that perspective where we talk about instead of just focusing on, oh, well, Caitlin's been sick, you know, having that perspective of, you know, I'm grateful that it's not COVID and that it is just a cold. Yeah, agreed. Whereas in a normal year, we might be frustrated that it's a cold. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. I agree completely. Yeah, perspective helps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, good chat. I think we'll leave folks to the... Yeah rest of uh the pondering and meditating and <laughs> contemplating such things and uh we'll do we'll jump into announcements so i yes. know at staff meeting yesterday we had a myriad of announcements yes and i'm trusting your memory on this amanda well it's not my memory it's my notes because my memory is mm -hmm. not um all there all the time so yes we have a few um important announcements First of all, uh, we have our Thanksgiving Eve worship service tonight at, Ooh. remind us of the time at seven. Is that seven right? Seven o'clock, live stream only. Yep. Tuesday's doing music. I'm doing liturgical pieces and the sermon and Thanksgiving stuff. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to that. It's one of my favorite services. I really I agree. It yeah. sets the tone for the whole weekend. It does. It really, it kind of centers us and puts um, our hearts and minds yep. just in a better place. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we would love to have you tune in to our YouTube channel to join us for that tonight. Right. And then um, next we actually have a drop box that has been installed at the church, which is exciting. Um, because we know in COVID times, it's been hard if you want to just drop something by the church and um, you know, we're not able to get in because the building's closed or whatnot. Um, it's kind of an easy thing. Or if you remember on a Saturday when the office is closed, oh, I wanted to drop off you know, my offering or something. Um, it's a great, a great way to do that. And that uh, drop box is next to the um, handicap door. Is that right? Um, going right at the, the handicap door in the parking uh, to the parking lot. Yes. Yeah. And so that will be checked regularly by staff. Um, and we still encourage you if you use it, feel free to let someone know that you put something in there. Um, but yeah. Good. Um, what else do we have? <laughs> yes. We also have worship in person coming on Sunday, like always. And so um, if you would like to join us for that, a reminder that even though it is a holiday week, we still have that 12 o'clock noon cutoff time on Friday. Yeah, Betty Quinn so, asked if it was too late to sign up. Oh, 
And it's not too late to sign up. It is not. It's not too late at all. And so we would love to have you um, tune in and join us uh, with your mask and all of that if you feel safe and comfortable doing so. Yesterday in staff meeting, there was still a ton of room. I'm sure that that's still the case today as well. Um, so we look forward to joining you. Are you joining us in person? Or if you're not comfortable with that, to joining us virtually um, for our live stream worship service at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Good. Um, then also, uh, Jenny has uh, put together and made available an Advent devotional that she has um, for families. And so if you have not yet gotten a copy of that, uh, you can get one of those from her. You can contact her to make that arrangement. I also saw she posted it in our RLC family ministry um, Facebook group. And so you're welcome to check it out there as well and download it. But Jenny has also said she's happy to get you a paper copy. I know we have some at our house and are looking forward to spending that time together and doing that little journey through Advent together. Good. Heather Colburn also asked if you needed communion elements for tonight's service, and the answer is no. We'll be celebrating communion on Sunday, not tonight. Excellent. Good question. That is. Um, and Betty Quinn asked about giving tree items in the drop box. I believe our items, is it too small to put things in? I don't know how big the opening is. Do you, Steve? Mm. I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, it's not a, it's more like for papers and paperwork and such. So okay. I don't think uh, large items and packaging would fit in there. Okay. All right. Good question. Good. Yep. Yep. Good question. And then um, the last announcement that I have is just a reminder about um, our new key situation. Mm -hmm. um, so the outside doors to RLC have all been re-keyed. So if you had a key um, that would get you inside the church, um, it won't anymore. <laughs> and so we just want you to know that before you make that attempt. Um, <laughs> and we also are um, like advancing in technology a little bit and even have a keypad that um, you can have a code for as well. And so we're in the process of developing a policy um, just to practice good stewardship of our building and security and all of that. And so once the policy is developed, we'll be able to appropriately assign keys and codes as needed. Yep. Great, great reminder there. Uh, also a reminder, you, you won't be needing to use your key generally. Right. The offices are still closed. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the time we get up and running again in... Uh, <laughs> Whenever that is, <laughs> I want to say by next summer, but you're not going to give us a guarantee. <laughs> uh, no, sorry, <laughs> but we should be good to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll be better than um, today. We were with Lyric and he was asking about going to iPlay, this indoor playground in Kennewick. Uh -huh. And we said, well, Betty, it's closed right now. He said, yeah, maybe in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, raising a pessimist. <laughs> it feels that way. I'm it sure. does. <laughs> it feels that way, I'm sure, to a kid. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, those are all of the main announcements that I have. Great. Um, anything else that you can think of, Steve? Well, still doing our devotions in First John. Have another week of those at Excellent. least. And then uh, on Sunday, we're beginning Advent. So starting an Advent series on loving between Advents. Mm, really yes. about the sermon on Sunday. Uh, and then we'll do an Advent series for my devotions too. I just oh, have great. to figure out what that's going to be yet. <laughs> yeah, the spirit will lead you. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I hope so. But um, yeah, we have devotionals all week, so... There's one on for tomorrow and Friday as well. So hopefully you can join us for those. Great. I think that's all that I can remember. <laughs> I'd love to pray for us as we close. That sounds great. Lord God, thank you for this time together. 
for the opportunity to consider those things for which we are grateful. God, help us to give you thanks in all things and in all circumstances. Yes, even in 2020, uh, for the gift of grace, the forgiveness of sins, uh, the communion of the saints, a resurrection into new life, and kingdom living, the life that we live now in abundance. God, help us to, to have an attitude that is filled with thanks and gratitude for you and others around us. God, give us courage and strength as you provide opportunity to speak our faith to those around us. Help us to be sensitive, Holy Spirit, to your prompting when it's time to say something and when it's time to remain with our mouths closed. For your glory, God, for your honor, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, happy Thanksgiving. We hope to see you tonight at 7 on our YouTube channel. Yes. And Sunday at 10. Enjoy your rest and respite. And uh, may you just find God's grace and peace to overwhelm you in the next few days. Mm. We love you and miss you. So much. See you soon. Bye. Bye.